The maintenance of organic matter in field soils is an important soil management consideration for field production managers committed to a sustained yield program. With the repeated removal and sale, mining of to topsoil during the production of a series of bald and burlapped nursery crops, the organic matter content of many nursery soil is gradually depleted. I'm Dr. DeBusk and in this video I'll discuss benefits and types of organic matter and soil conservation and techniques. Organic matter is of value because it directly influences the physical and biological properties of the soil and because most forms of organic matter serve as a source of nutrients, particularly micronutrients. Organic matter that has been converted to humus improves the moisture retention potential, percolation rates, drainage, and structure of the soil. The addition of organic matter such as green manure crops, animal manures, and compost will stimulate the density and diversity of the soil microbial population. Organic matter also improves aeration and the water and nutrient holding capacity, all of which improve root distribution patterns and plant quality. Animal manures have long been used as a source of organic matter and plant nutrients. Although manure contains re relatively low concentrations of plant nutrients on a percentage basis, 0.5 to 1.5% nitrogen, 0.1 to 0.4% phosphorus, and 0.35 to 1% potassium. They contain appreciable amounts when applied at relatively high rates per acre. The actual composition of manure varies considerably. Stable manure may be applied at rates as high as 30 tons per acre, although more frequent smaller applications, 5 to 10 tons per acre, are more effective. Poultry manure contains 2 to 3 times as much nitrogen as other manures and decays rapidly, releasing ammonia, which can cause plant injury. If it is thoroughly mixed with soil or sawdust, it is less likely to cause injury. The primary objection to the use of animal manures is the weed problem that follows application and the cost of shipping and spreading. The weed problem can be minimized either by using manure obtained from grain feeding confinement operations or by composting the manure prior to use. The cost of handling large quantities of manure is offset by improved growth. Animal manure is an excellent organic source of relatively slow-release nutrients, particularly minor elements. Sod and green manure crops are grown in rotation with nursery crops to improve soil structure and add organic matter. Cover crops are grown to protect the soil against the forces of erosion and aid in maintaining the organic matter content of the soil. Grasses in combination with legumes are excellent crops for improving nursery soils. Grasses supply organic matter, especially through their dense root system, while tap-rooted legumes, for example alfalfa, improve the internal drainage. For maximum production of organic matter, a sod crop should be grown for a minimum of two years. In situations where a sod crop cannot be used in rotation with nursery crops, green manure crops can often be used to their advantage. They are grown for less than a growing season and are plowed under while in a succulent state and before they set seed. Some crops that are used as green manure include annual ryegrass, alfalfa, field corn, foxtail millet, soybeans, sorghum, sedan grass, sedan sorghum hybrids, and in some areas wheat overseeded in the spring with clover. In extensive plantings where trees are planted on wide spacings, growers should consider using grass aisles as companion or complementary plantings. Grasses such as bahia grass make it an excellent sod cover that can be used as access routes for heavy equipment, especially when the soil is wet. In addition, the sod will control erosion, modify the soil environment, add organic matter when plowed, reduce the quantity of herbicide applications, and reduce time requirements for harvesting the plants and performing various cultural practices related to the growth and development of the trees. Regular mowing, 14 to 21 days, of the turf will be necessary during the growing season. However, growth control of sod is also possible with the growth regulator chemical. Bark and sawdust have been found to be economical soil amendments when supplemented with nitrogen. When bark or sawdust or other similar materials are applied to or mixed with soil in which plants are growing, nitrogen deficiency can and often does develop. Microorganisms, which multiply due to the presence of the carbonaceous substrate, require nitrogen for the growth period. They compete more successfully for available nitrogen than do the plants resulting in the crops suffering from nitrogen deficiency. However, a supplemental application of approximately 2% available nitrogen per unit weight of sawdust will minimize this problem. 
The addition of compost produced from landscape waste, food waste, and biosolids can rapidly replenish the organic matter content of a nursery soil, as well as providing a low concentration of nutrients required for plant growth. The land should be plowed to a depth of 8 inches or more to incorporate and distribute the organic matter into the root zone. Soil conservation is another area of field production that management must direct its attention to if the nursery is to remain productive. Soil conservation is managing the soil so that its productivity can be optimized for both current and future plantings. Unfortunately, many nursery practices contribute to the loss of soil productivity. These practices include 1. Loss of soil by digging operations and erosion, 2. Long periods of clean cultivation, and 3. Performing nursery operations when the soil is wet. Digging shade trees with a 44-inch diameter ball removes 1.3 tons of soil or about 470 tons of soil per acre. Clean cultivation is commonly practiced in field production because other vegetation may compete with the nursery crop for nutrients and water. Clean cultivation is maintained by cultivating out the weeds that appear or by the use of herbicides. Clean cultivation, however, significantly increases erosion. The effects of raindrops or sprinkler irrigation water hitting the soil is the first step in water erosion. Performing field operations when the soil is wet is often necessary in field production nurseries, especially in the spring. This practice will compact the soil and reduce its porosity. Little can be done to prevent the loss of nursery soil that is sold as part of the product, other than to change to a container production system or to produce bare root plants. However, much can be done to minimize the loss of nursery soils by erosion and to maintain or improve soil structure. Protecting the soil surface with a canopy of vegetation or with mulches will reduce the effect of rain or irrigation water. Anything that can be done to promote the rapid establishment of the nursery crop is likely to reduce the amount of erosion. Planting a solid crop between the rows is, does, is a desirable conservation practice where it is a viable option. The planting of green manure or cover crops as discussed previously is also a desirable soil conservation practice as well as a means of increasing organic matter and improving soil structure. The use of heavy equipment on the land, particularly when the soil is wet, should be minimized. Where feasible, minimum tillage should be practiced to reduce the frequency that heavy equipment is on the land. The chisel plow leaves crop residue on the surface which aids in reducing erosion. Across the slope tillage or planting nursery rows on the contour lines will produce small dams that will slow the flow of water and minimize gully erosion on hilly sites. In areas where the terrain is composed of short or regular slopes, this type of tillage may not be possible. Various water drainage systems can be developed in nurseries to minimize soil loss by erosion, including the construction of terraces, grass waterways, retention ponds, and subsurface drainage systems. In conclusion, hopefully you learned about some more organic ways of adding and conserving organic matter and soil.